They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. I've often told people that I talk to out on the campaign trail to, when they say, state what? When I say I'm running for the state legislature, I tell them that the decisions that are made here in the legislature are often more important for your everyday life than the decisions the president makes. If you really want to influence the politics of this country, you don't just give money to presidential campaigns. You don't just give money to congressional campaign committees. Smart players put their money in the states. ALEC has forged a unique partnership between state legislators and leaders from the corporate and business community. This partnership offers businessmen the extraordinary opportunity to apply their talents to solve our nation's problems and build on our opportunities. I was stunned at the notion that politicians and corporate representatives, corporate lobbyists were actually voting behind closed doors on these changes to the law before they were introduced in state houses across the country. ALEC uh, has been, I think, uh, a wonderful organization. Uh, not only does it bring uh, like-minded legislators together, but the private sector uh, engagement and partnership uh, in ALEC is, is really what I think makes it uh, the organization that it is. Corporate influence is tainting the legislative process, particularly out across the states, and average Americans are paying the price. There's two main categories they have. One is uh, how to reduce the size of government, uh, and the other half of it is this model legislation that's in the corporate good. In other words, there's profit-driven legislation. How can you open up a new market? How can you privatize something that can open up a market for a company? And between those two divisions, you're kind of getting to the same end goal, which is really kind of ultimate privatization of everything. Mark Pocan is something of an expert on ALEC. In fact, to learn as much about it as he could, he became a member. What, I, what I'd realize is if you join ALEC for a mere hundred dollars as a legislator, you have the full access like any corporate member. Those corporate members pay up to $25,000 for that privilege. For a first-hand look at how corporations interact with ALEC legislators, Pocan took himself to an ALEC conference. Hi, I'm State Representative Mark Pocan and welcome to my video blog. Uh, I'm outside of the Marriott on Canal Street in New Orleans at the ALEC Convention, the American Legislative Exchange Council. That was where you watched the interaction of a room full of lobbyists. You know, free drinks, free cigars, whining, dining. Uh, many people just came from a dinner that was sponsored by some special interest, coming to a party that's sponsored by a special interest so they can continue to talk about special interest. This is from um, the New Orleans Convention. This includes a number of seminars um, that they held for legislators, including one called uh, Warming Up to Climate Change, the many benefits of increased atmospheric CO2. At 2011 ALEC conference, Lo and behold, was sponsored by BP, ExxonMobil, Chevron, and Shell, among others. Another event featured guns. This is the NRA-sponsored uh, shooting event for legislators and for lobbyists. Free. There was even one offering free cigars. Sponsored by Reynolds American, which is one of the biggest tobacco companies in the world, uh, and the Cigar Association of America. Despite it all, Alec says it's not engaged in a lobbying effort. In fact, Alec operates not as a lobby group, but as a nonprofit, a charity. In his filing with the IRS, Alec says its mission is education, which means it pays no taxes and its corporate members get a tax write off. Its legislators get a lot too. In Wisconsin, I can't take anything of value from a lobbyist, I can't take a cup of coffee from a, a lobbyist. At ALEC, it's just the opposite. You know, you get there and you're being wined and dined by corporate interests. I can go down there and be wined and dined for, for days 
in order to hear about their special legislation. I mean, the head of Shell Oil flew in on his private jet to come to this conference. The head of one of the largest utility companies in the country was there on a panel, a utility company in 13 states, and here he is presenting to legislators. I mean, they clearly brought in some of the biggest corporate names uh, in special interest dumb and uh, had them meeting with uh, legislators because a lot of business transpires at these events. For most of its existence, Alex stayed out of the national news. That changed in March 2012 when a gunshot sounded in the Florida night. Trayvon Martin unarmed, but for a bag of candy and an iced tea that he was carrying. Zimmerman. You'll recall that the shooter in Trayvon Martin's death was protected at first by Florida's so-called Stand Your Ground Law. Stand Your Ground was the work of the National Rifle Association. There's its lobbyist standing right beside Governor Jeb Bush when he signed it into law in 2005. Although Alec didn't originate the Florida law, it seized on it for the Stand Your Ground model it would circulate in other states. 24 of them have passed a version of it. How did this law not only get in place in Florida, but around the country? And all the fingers kept pointing back to Alec. When civil rights and grassroots groups learned about Alec's connection to Stand Your Ground laws, they were outraged. Alec doesn't do its work alone. They do it with some of the biggest corporate brands in America. Tell us what you know about what the impact has been of the, of the Trayvon Martin case in terms of funding this organization, which has been pushing these Stand Your Ground laws. This is a group that has lost funders the, in the last few weeks as people have learned about Alec's role in promoting Stand Your Ground laws. Before long, corporations were pulling out of Alec, including Coca-Cola, Kraft Foods, McDonald's, Mars, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson. Caught in the glare of the national spotlight, Alec tried to change the subject. Well, you know, I think the, the entire debate needs to be reframed. And really what Alec is, is a bipartisan association of state legislators. Um, we have, you know, legislators of all political stripes coming together to talk about the most critical issues facing the states and, and trying to come up with the best solutions to face some of the all problems right, So your point is it's not a partisan organization. But the floodgates had opened. At last count, at least 40 corporations have fled Alec, including many additional big names. Still, many of its member companies have held the fort, and Alec continues to strengthen its ties to conservative groups. Recently, Alec held a high-level, closed-door meeting with congressional conservatives in Washington to better coordinate their policy goals. Here's the interesting thing. This story isn't done. This is an ongoing fight in America, and it really gets us to a, a question of how do you counter so much organized power, organized money in our politics. Common Cause has filed a complaint about Alec with the Internal Revenue Service. We think there's tax fraud involved. The group is challenging Alec's tax-free status, claiming that Alec is a corporate lobbying group masquerading as a public charity. And those who oppose the Alec agenda continue to speak out against it. They include Wisconsin's Mark Pocan. This is supposed to be Education Day when really it's Alec Day. And Arizona Steve Farley, who hasn't given up on his Alec Accountability Act. When I introduced it, it got a lot of attention nationally. Um, Wisconsin legislator Mark Pocan called me up and said, this is great, can we do it too? So I said, fine, let's do it. So we're actually creating our own model legislation. It's sort of an interesting revenge on Alec. At Common Cause and the Center for Media and Democracy, researchers continue to pour over Alec's documents connecting the dots between its corporate patrons and compliant legislators. State by state by state, citizens have to decide. Do they want legislators to go to fancy resorts and sit behind closed doors with lobbyists and write their bills and then bring them back and introduce them without exposing their ALEC roots, or do they want to do something about that? As more and more people become aware of the role of the American Legislative Exchange Council, they are becoming more aware that this corporate agenda does not match the values of the American people. Citizens are catching on, but Alec is still everywhere. Watch for it, coming soon to a statehouse near you.